Good morning. Glad you could join us for our Strongest Dirty podcast this morning. Hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, God's been good, and I hope you realize that he's been good to you as well. Have a great week, great summer. We're getting our garden planted. And uh, this coming Monday, got some seeds germinating. It's amazing to see how God works when it comes to how plants grow and and uh, the springtime and the green. And the only downside is I got allergies and those aren't <clears throat> the best this time of year. But I will make it. But uh, that's what we're uh, uh, gearing towards now. We got our uh, Finally Portrait Sunday coming up in a couple of weeks. I want you to be a part of that. I believe that will be a blessing to you on the 19th. And uh, But uh, the weekend here, once again, I hope you're ready to serve God. I hope you're already serving God. And I'll talk about that a little bit this morning. Probably a shorter lesson, but just a thought this morning. But Acts chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible says, Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so, now shall so come in like manner, as you have seen him go into heaven. That is the angel I wrote down there in my Bible. I underlined, why stand ye gazing? In other words, get busy. What are you doing? The disciples and probably some other people that were there at the time saw Jesus give his last command. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Go preach. Go do what I've told you to do. And as Jesus goes up into heaven and disappears, the angels come and say, Hey, what are you doing? What are you guys doing? I wonder if the angels never came if they just would would have stayed there and stared up into heaven and uh, looked up and just indefinitely stood there. I don't know. And uh, But uh, uh, the angels had in the sense snapped their fingers and said, Hey, guys, there's a job to do. Hey guys, there's a there's a there's something that God needs for you to do. He's told you to go into the world, preach the gospel. He said, "Remain in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high." But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and uh, and uh, but the idea today, uh, stop gazing, uh, stop gazing. These men stared into heaven, mesmerized by what had just taken place. And uh, the the amazing thing that Christ just ascended into heaven. He's no longer with us in the physical flesh uh, anymore. And uh, but mesmerized. But we had to under, they had to understand. The angels had to snap them back into reality that there's work that needs to be done. I want to talk to you uh, quickly about this thought. But uh, number one, don't lose focus on the spiritual work that needs to be done. Many times we can get into a place where we call zoning out. And if you ever seen a child zone out, you're talking to maybe your child specifically or maybe another child. And that child's, you know that child's not paying attention. He's zoning out. He may be looking uh, at you, but his mind is not engaged in what you're saying. He's zoned out. He's not paying attention. And I think for a moment the disciples zoned out looking up in the sky just mesmerized that Jesus uh, became one with the sky and just disappeared and just zoned out for a moment until you had to snap the fingers, you know, with your children. You had to snap them and say, hey, pay attention. Hey, wake up. And uh, uh, there's work that needs to be done. Focus on what uh, work that needs to be accomplished. And I got to reach the world. And uh, we got to go out and tell people about Christ. We got to go build the church. We got to go see things happen. We got prayer uh, to, we got to get a hold of God. We got to see what God can do. Spiritual work is much more important than the physical work. We can zone out in our personal lives and lose track of the spiritual, the eternal work that needs to be done. That sometimes we get so caught up in our physical life, we get so caught up in in our jobs, in our uh, jobs that are that have no profit for eternity. We work all the hours. We put in the time with our physical job and never uh, and forget about the spiritual work that God has created us to do. God didn't create us to do our work. He created us to do His. And uh, now keep in mind, uh, uh, working is important. There's nothing wrong with having a job. But that job can take the place of what God has called us 
to do. The work that you have on this earth should complement the work that God has for us to do. It shouldn't take away from it. And your job should not take away from attending church. It should help you attend a church more. Uh, uh, your job should not take away from tithing or take away from giving or take away from being uh, a servant in the, in the Lord's work. It ought to uh, complement and help you serve God more. And we got to keep our focus. We ought not to zone out on the spiritual things. And God says, I got a job for you to do. Each one, each believer has a job that God has for them to do. And uh, if we're not careful, the things of this world can take us away from that job that God has us to do. And uh, there's a point where you can work too much and not do what God has for you to do. Where it's no longer a compliment to the work God has you to do. <clears throat> Number two, Jesus has everything under control, so do what he says. God gave the disciples a command that it was time for them to do what God said. Wasn't time for him to stand up gazing. Wasn't time for you. Excuse me. Wasn't time for them to stare up into the sky. And uh, it's time for them to get busy. And God sent some angels robed in white to uh, get them to pay attention that there's work that needs to be done. Uh, that needs to be done. That needs to be taken care of. Let's get busy. Let's get on our knees. Let's start praying. Let's start working. Let's start reading uh, uh, reading our Bibles. Let's start walking with God. Let's start praying. I read a quote, quote the other day from Brother Hiles. If only the, the, the church members could understand what it means, could learn what it means to walk with God, to spend time with God, <clears throat> to get to know who He is, how lives would change, how marriages would would change if we would understand that God comes first. God doesn't come first when I work through church. And uh, don't tell me that God comes first in your life if you uh, don't never come to church, if you don't make church a priority, or if you don't tell me God's first in, in your in your finances when you never tithe, you never give back what God has given to you. Don't tell me how, how important souls are in your life. You never go soul winning. It's important to keep the things of God, the spiritual things first. They're much more important than the physical things of life. Everything has their place. Work has its place. Family has its place. But God should be at the first. And our actions should show that, that God is first. But God has everything under control. We ought to do what he says. Just listen to what he has told us to do. God gave us a whole book on what we need to do to make it through this life, on what we need to do to get blessed, on what we need to do to see him come through. And we just need to do what he says. Again, we're not made to do our work. I, I got to go to work. No, you're made to do God's work. And everything in life ought to be a compliment to the work God has called you to do. And God has, like I said before, God has something for us to do that you ought to serve when it comes in the ministry and there are places that you can serve whether it be a help whether it be a teacher whether it be a, a bus worker whether it be a bus captain whether it be a uh, a, a song leader or uh, whatever the case may be there are so many places that you can serve god it's important that you make those a priority that you allow the physical work the earthly work to complement the spiritual work. We're made to do his work, not our own. Uh, we're not, to, made, not put on this earth to make our name great. We're put on this earth to make his name great. We're not put on this earth to uh, uh, make our uh, our, uh, 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 our name or, uh, or have a status or, or give ourselves a position. We're there to make sure he is glorified. That everything in our life ought to glorify him. Ought to please him. If we can do that, what a blessing that would be. It's a simple thing. Don't stop. Just stop gazing. And don't be the one that gazes and zones out. Get busy. Get working. Get in the work. Uh, get in the yoke with Christ. My, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. God's work will always be the best work that you can do. And have the things in your life complement what God has for you to do. Have your work complement Sunday. Have your uh, giving complement the things of God. And uh, what a wonderful thing that would be in your life. Well, I hope that's a blessing. I hope that's an encouragement to you. And it's a thought I had this morning. And if I can do anything for you, please let me know. I'd love to see you this weekend. Be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Be in your place. And uh, I believe God 
will bless you for it. Have a great day. And God bless.